to today's live I'm Freya from Crafty Sermson and today I'm going to be sewing live with you doing a little sew along to make our oh, almost lost it to make our um, fabric baskets kit so we have had these kits um, available in different fabrics um, for a couple of years now and they are a strand favorite we make them in workshops as well as have the kits for you to make at home and I thought today it would be really fun to make one of the for you. So if you have got one at home, or if you wanted to buy one, you can watch this video back and I can show you how it's done. They are a really fun and very um, simple kit. They are perfect for new sewers. So perhaps you've bought a new sewing machine over the Christmas holidays or in the standing sales. Perhaps you've just got a sewing machine at home that you can't use for a while and you really want to just have a simple project to get you started. This is a fantastic option for you. The kit includes the fabric, the wadding and, and the instructions to make and the pattern to make two sizes of fabric basket. So you've got everything in the box that you're going to need which is really really great um, and we've put these together with this really fun, I'm going to get out of the box, um, raccoon print cotton. So it's a 100% cotton fabric with these little cuddling raccoons on. Um, and with Valentine's Day coming up, this is actually very thematically um, on, isn't it? So I'm really pleased to be making this with you um, in the run-up to Valentine's Day. Little raccoons, little love hearts, so really sweet. So you get the fabric, and that's 100% craft cotton. You also get your instructions. Um, but of course, now you can follow this video back if reading instructions isn't um, your favourite way of doing things. You get your paper pattern to make the two sizes and that, um, yeah, that's reusable. So once you've made one of these at home or along with me here, you can um, make more um, and they are so useful. Um, and I'll talk to you about the many places I've got them in my house and some use cases in a minute. So you've also got the lining fabric. So you've got this nice coordinating lining fabric to go with the um, raccoons and you've got a wadding, a piece of wadding. So these fabric baskets have wadding inside to hold them up and give them a bit of support and a bit of structure um, and that's done with the wadding to kind of give them a bit of squishiness as well. They're really, they're very tactile when they're done and they're not, because they've got the wadding, they don't kind of flop all over the place. They hold their own and they kind of stand up a little bit um, as well. So that's that's the trick to that. So if you haven't worked with wadding before, this is often used in things like quilting or bag making or patchwork of making cushions or anything like that. Um, you can use this wadding and this is a nice, very um, warm introduction to it. So you can have a go on a small project and get used to the feel and how it sews together. So that's what you get in the box. I'm going to make the large box, the large fabric basket today. Um, I've decided, well not decided, I've realised that we need some uh, plant pots um, for the plants that we have in the studio. So I'm going to make um, the large ones to put a plant in because that's one of the thousands of uses of these baskets. Um, so a large one holds um, a, oh, take my girl, love that, about a 20 centimetre um, plant pot in. Um, and the smaller one would hold kind of a 12 centimetre plant pot. But if you're not a plants person, there are like literally a hundred ways other things you can do with the fabric baskets. You can use them to store the toiletries in, um, you can use them as um, places to put cotton wool on your dressing table. You, we use them as um, thread baskets on our cutting table. So when you've got all those threads from sewing, that's a nice, easy, convenient place to pop those to keep them um, and pop them in the winter so they don't you know, get everywhere and give you fuzzy elbows. You can use them to contain small sewing projects so that you've got everything together when you need it. You can use it to contain your threads, like literally anything in your sewing room they will hold. And so yeah, so like there's loads of different options for you um, if you're making these of where you could use it in your house or your sewing room or your office or wherever. So I'm going to uh, make the larger one today. So you get the two sizes of this fabric basket on the pattern piece. So I'm going to cut out the larger one and I'm reaching for my 
paper scissors, so making sure I avoid my fabric scissors because I cannot be that person who ruins my fabric scissors with paper. So there we go. Now it's nice quick pattern to cut out, lots of straight lines. And we've made some annotations on the pattern, which I will show you because they are a bit of a funny shape with this corners cut out the bottom. So here we are, there's my pattern piece cut out, all of two seconds left. Um, at the top, we've got written top of the basket, and then down here it says boss, base of the basket. So that way, that that's um, so you know when you're working with a um, directional print, like the fabric I'm using today, it's got a directional print on it, um, I want to make sure that the base of the fabric goes at the bottom of my fabric print, so, it's, um, so nothing is upside down, I don't have any upside down lookings the end of my of my work. Okay, so now I've cut out my paper pattern, I'm also going to cut out my fabric. So I am going to reach my fabric scissors now. I'm going to do two layers at once for the speed and because I know that's going to work out fine. So I'm going to put that there. And I've got pins, I've not got weights today, I'll use the pins. So I'm just going to cut that out really quick and then we've got to cut out two of the outer fabric and then two of the lining and two of the wadding so all of those then come together to make the basket um, do what do you prefer i prefer using pins generally because i know that then everything's lying exactly where i need it to but a lot of people i know prefer ha to use pattern breaks so which is it that is your preference do you prefer pins or pattern breaks when you're cutting out your pattern no right answers i think it's all on a personal preference um, but it's definitely one of those things that people get a bit uh, are divided by. There's definite preferences either way. And everyone's got their own opinion on that. So it's quite an interesting, an interesting discussion. So yeah, there we go. I'm just cutting all the way around my pattern piece. Uh, so I do think this fabric is ideal for running up the run up to Valentine's Day. Um, it's got such a lovely little cuddly raccoon on and cuddling each other little red hearts could um, maybe pop some chocolates in it for your loved one for valentine's day or galentine's day if you celebrate valentine's day with your friends um, nice nice gift basket it could be fill it with chocolates and a couple of little bottles of gin maybe i'd be very happy to receive that i certainly would so that's my first two pieces cut out so now I'm going to do the same with my lining piece and we're making the fabric baskets okay so I'll pop that there um, so we're making the fabric baskets um, out of the kit today um, with the fabric that's included and I'm just going to cut out my two lining pieces next and this lining is really fun as well you can see it's um, it's a dashwood uh, fabric twist with all the um, nice red spots. We thought that coordinated so beautifully. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Um, with the with the um, red hearts that like uh, fill the fabric here, um, so it's a nice coordinating print that's included in the kit. So you get both pieces of fabric and enough of both to make two fabric baskets. Um, so it makes a really nice set, and you can use that absolutely anywhere in the house. It's um, a really versatile little piece of sewing that you can gift or use. Right, cut out the next pieces. Got to focus where I'm cutting. Can't be jabbering. meter of fabric of each of the fabrics so that's how much you need to make the two sizes of basket so we've got there we go 
and I'm going to make the two fabric baskets. So this is an example of the smaller sized one, um, and that is one of the ones that we use in the studio, in our sewing studio, to um, catch all our threads and you know, just pop your scraps of fabric in there to help you keep the space nice and tidy. Um, and it's such a useful little basket to have around. This one was a, a little button on the inside, so you can like add add something like that, and then that um, hangs on our cutting mats. So, yeah, fantastic. Oh, yeah, we use them all the time. I've actually got some really nice ones in my bathroom, and it's um letting me tidy all my bottles and lotions and things away, which look so much tidier than when they were just on the shelf. You know what I mean? Okay, let's go. So now I'm cutting my wadding, and I'm cutting my wadding in the same way as I did my fabrics. So I'm just using a double layer, and I'm cutting it out. Oops, not that way, I'm not. I'm just going to pop my pins in all the way around again. And it's a bit, obviously it's thicker, so you want to take your time with it. Um, make sure things aren't shifting. Use plenty of pins to hold the pattern down. Um, and just take your time with your cutting. Use big snips when you're cutting through thick fabric. Use sharp pins, this is a really cool one. Not sharp pins. Or can I just use sharp pins this time? Done, almost done start cutting. Almost done pinning. So, oh, last bit. So I've got my spare wadding in my fabric basket. Out, we're then going to start sewing the two sides of the basket together, and that's a little layering job. So, let me show you how to do that because it can get a little confusing if you don't take your time with it. Okay, all cut out and ready to sew. Right, so, what we're going to be doing is let me turn. Let me clear it so you can better see. That's what we're making today, so I'm keeping that in sight. So what we need to do is we are going to start with our, we've got three layers. We've got our outer fabric, which is the raccoons. We've got our, in line, um, our wadding, which is going to go as an inner layer. And then we've got our lining fabric as well. So we're going to start with our wadding fabric. We're going to lay that with the right side, the printed side, facing up. And then we're going to take a layer of our wadding. We're going to put that on top. I'm having second thoughts now, but that's not quite right, is it? It goes the lining fabric on top with the face down, so putting the printed side facing each other, with the right sides together. Glad I caught that, that was, that was going to be completely wrong otherwise. And then we bring in our wadding and that goes um, on the very top at this point. It's because it goes in between the layers once it's all sewn together, but that's like a little bit of sewing trickery there. So I'm glad I caught myself. Okay, so now we've got all those fabrics layered up. We are going to sew them together along this top edge. So this edge here is the top of the fabric basket. And then these bottom bits are going to be the boxed out corners for the base. So we're just going to sew with a one centimeter seam allowance along the very top edge here. So I'm going to take that to my sewing machine. Hopefully it's plugged in. Excellent. And I'm checking my settings. All get the writing good. 
you go. So just a nice straight stitch all the way along with a nice even seam allowance of, of one. Back stitch, you want to make sure everything stays together. So that's that seam finished, and now we're going to repeat that with the other one. But before I do, I'm just going to show you um, opening it up like that and putting it aside. So then we'll repeat the same process, which is I get it right this time. The outer fabric on the top with the right side facing up, the lining fabric um, next, and then the right side, the right side or printed side is going to go down, so it's right sides together with the outer fabric. And then on top of that, which is end up going, going to end up being in between the other two layers, we're putting our wadding layer. So that goes in like that. Just flattening them all out. And then again, I'm gonna repeat myself, I'm gonna do a line of stitching across the top to hold the the layers together. So there we go. So now we've got our two our kind of two sides of our bag. We've got two pieces that look a lot like this. So now I'm just going to trim where the wadding has peeked out a little bit. So I get the fast cutting a little bit wonky. Um, and we're going to take our two sides of our bags. So we're going to take um, open them up. So we've got the uh, fabrics both pressed out. Uh, facing up on the one and then we're going to take the second one of the identical one and we're going to push place that down on top there so we've got the raccoons on the raccoons touching and the spots and the spots on the same side as well and then we're going to pin on the straight edges and on the long straight edges we're going to sew all the way around so that's a lot like our makeup bag tutorial from last week so um, you just want to sew, not the corners where the chunks are cut out, just the straight edges. And if you've not yet made a makeup bag and you may be a bit nervous about it, this is a really nice one to have a go at beforehand. It's kind of a warm-up one because of this technique, the boxing out is the same, um, but you're not putting a zip in this one, so it's a bit, a little bit easier but simpler for you. Um, but if you feel like wanting to learn how to do zips, go back and watch last week's video on how to sew a zipped makeup bag, not last week, so it was the week before, but my last tutorial, and you can learn how to put in a zip into a makeup bag as well as box out corners and things, so that's on our Facebook channel videos for you to um, watch whenever you're, you want. Okay, so now that's all pinned together, I am going to sew those straight edges. Um, so just four straight edges, and it goes all the way along. Um, both both long sides and then the two short ends. Before I do that, I am going to put a pin in where my seams meet in the middle to make sure that my fabric joins are in a nice clean place. And when it turns out, it looks um, really tidy and it's not got not those seams that were initially going to be. We don't want wonky seams. We're going to take our time with it. Stitch past the pin in. Um, 
just putting the pin through the seam and then back out again through the seam, stitch it where you're stitching, and that helps make sure that things all lined up for when you turn it out the other way. So we're doing the sewing machine back into play, and that's um, four nice rounds of stitching, all with a one centimeter seam allowance again. And do remember to back stitch at both ends um, of each seam. So it's fairly new at sewing and want to add this kind of thing back into a skill that you've picked up. I'm a firm believer that anyone can learn to sew if that's what they want to do. It's a very, um, there are so many great ways and introductions to sewing out there that if it's something that you fancy taking and having a go at and you're a bit nervous with a sewing machine, a project like this would be brilliant to make you feel a skill that you've gone through and get you started. So we show you hand sew straight lines, just lots of tips and tricks to it that um, anyone can learn with a bit of guidance and support. So that's very much our philosophy here at Graphic Sew. So we want everyone to learn to be able to sew and pick up the skills that they want, whether it's crafting or bag making or quilting or dressmaking, which is my absolute passion. I love dressmaking. That's very much what we're about, which is why these kits. Um, we've got these kits with beginners in mind so the beginners can have everything they need in a nice box, handy box, ready to go um, at home and they can have now watch this video to the extra support which we're very pleased to be able to do. Your threads, yes. See, and then we're going to box out some corners. So, boxing out corners is a really handy technique to learn. It's um, really very simple, um, one, but it's a bit, it's making something 2D into 3D. So, it's like once you've got your head around how that works, you can apply that skill to different bags. It's similar to um, dressmaking. Really, a, um, a nice skill you'll use a lot once you've mastered it. Um, so this is how we work box out corners. So this, starting with our corner piece with the chunk missing here, and to box it out, we're going to put our finger in between the layers. We're going to put our finger in between the layers and push it open, and then pull the cut sides so that the sewn edges, the sewn seams, meet in the middle it further out until it's a straight line. Then we're going to create a couple of pins, one in the middle to hold those seams together, one across here, and one over here. And so now you can see that the seam is here and here and it goes into the middle of this cross section. And then what we're going to do to secure that is to sew with a one centimeter seam allowance along there, and that's how you box out a corner. And we're going to do it on three, three of the corners that we've got cut out here, because we need to leave one of them open so that we can turn out the bag when we're finished. So I'm just going to repeat the process. I'm going to so flat fingers in, pop it out, meet up that seam in the middle. in it, 
make sure that it's all popped out all the way, nice and flat. So it's in the net on the other side. And then just one more. We're going to be doing three out of the four for this one because we want to be able to turn out the, the fabric basket from the fourth open one in a moment. So I'm putting like three pins in, so it holds it in the middle and then it holds the other end open. Closed, I should say, so it like drops out. And then once I've done those, we're going back to the same machine, still working with a one centimeter seam allowance. And just sewing those straight lines. So we're sewing from the raw edge, we're sewing a straight line one cent with a one centimeter seam allowance to close that off. down, take out pins, next one, Last one for now. And then there we go. There we go, take our pin. So that's three of our corners all done. And we're just going to have to remove the flyaway thread. They're going to be on the inside, but they don't need to pop from within. Just for tidiness sake. Okay. This is another one. Okay, so remember that corner that we didn't sew? Um, that's still here, nice and boxed, not boxed out even. So this time I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put my hand inside and I'm going to reach all the way through to the other end and I'm going to grab the other end and pull it back through on itself. So now we've got all our fabric the right way out, how we want it, but it looks like a big tube and that's not quite how we want it. So before we sort it into a basket, we need to close this open hole where we just pull everything through. So what we do is we push down the seam allowance on the um, raw edges and match up those seams on either side and we'll put a pin through and we're just going to sew that gap closed by the sewing machine there and this is absolutely something you could do by hand if you'd rather but I'm not going to do that for you today I don't have time right now but that, I'm a very slow hand so I guess you could do um, but you can do it by machine anyway so there's no need to get the hand wiggle out when you've already got your machine sitting on your desk so there we go push that in so all the raw edges are tucked inside And just do that with a very small seam allowance. So we're going to do this as close to the edge of the fabric as possible. Um, we're just going to sew that close next to the opening. And then that finishes that off very tidily. To be visible now, it's all not on the inside like the, all the other ones. 
into the little pins. Okay, so now we've still got the tube, but it's closed up. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the fabric, like, layer inside itself. There we go. So we're just going to push that lining down into the main bag. So it sits up like this. And then the very last thing to do, once you've kind of pushed each corner out to meet, meet its mate, we can top stitch around the outside here. So um, ideally you take this to an iron and you'd give it a really good press and match and like squish those um, fabrics down on the seam so it looks really tidy. So you can do it with your fingers and take your time with it. And once I've done that, I'm going to take it on um, my free off of my sewing machine. This little front pouch comes off so then I can fit my bag underneath really tidily. And I'm going to start at one of the seams, just before one of the seams. And about a centimetre in, stick into that one centimetre seam, one centimetre seam allowance that's used throughout the project. I'm just going to do a row of top stitching. I am going to lengthen the stitch length to three because I think that'll look really tidy. Three and a half, um, and do a nice row of top stitching all the way around to finish. So as I say, this bag is going to be um, used as a little plant pot holder for one when you can to get the things to fry the plants in. Um, Which is about the right size for my pants that I've got at the moment. So there you go. So we can fold that down. And there is your finished fabric basket uh, ready for you to pop your plants or scissors or threads or beauty products or chocolates, whatever you're going to use it for. All of those ideas and more. And it sits really nicely on the table ready to put things in. So that's the large size of this of the fabric baskets from the fabric basket kit that we sell um, and each of the kits is made and assembled here in our studio in Leicester by us and this is the fabric that you get in it it's this gorgeous little raccoon fabric um, and the lining and the wadding so you can make your whole bag up so not only can you make one there is enough fabric and in the instructions and templates to make two sizes so you can make a large one this size and a smaller one that's in it, also obviously in the fabric, this size. So you can make a little matching set of um, baskets, to, which make fantastic gifts as well as being useful for so many things around the house. So I thank you so much for watching today's sew along. These kits are available from our website. Um, I will pop the link in the comments so you can find it. Do um, let us know how you get on with them. If you buy them, you can talk to us in our Facebook group, The Crafty So-and-Sews, and we would love to see your projects, whether it's one made from our kit or from another project at all. Anything that you're sewing is very welcome at The Crafty So-and-Sews. Thank you so much for watching my video today. It's been really fun sewing along with you. Um, and if you've got any questions or would like any more information about this kit or any of our other products or our workshops, both online and in our Leicester studio, please do drop us a comment. We will we will get back to you as soon as we can, and we look forward to seeing what you make. So thanks so much for watching today, and um, we will see you on Thursday, because today is Tuesday. Sarah will be coming on to YouTube and Instagram. I forgot the name of Instagram for a second there. Sarah will be on YouTube and Instagram, and this week she is still doing some dressmaking sew-alongs, I believe. What are you making this week, Sarah? This is part of dress, so we're doing the zip. So this week on um, YouTube and Instagram, Sarah will be doing the Ready to Party Dress by My Homemade Wardrobes, which is our pattern brand, and they're inserting an invisible zip. So if you've always wanted to see how that's done, do tune in to that, and we'll put the link on Facebook so you can find it if you do. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Have a very good day. Goodbye.